LeBron, he already has four MVPs. He's a three-time NBA champion. He's an actor. He's a partner in Clutch Sports Agency. He's a philanthropist. He's a brand ambassador with Nike, Sprite, Samsung, Kia, McDonald's. I'm sure that I'm missing something. And he told the Open Run podcast that he wants to have a big part in a franchise when his playing days are over. Take a listen. I feel like my brain is, uh, as far as the game of basketball, is, is, is unique. And, uh, you know, I would love to continue to give my, uh, my knowledge uh, right. to the game. And uh, I, I would love to be, uh, you know, a part of a, part of a franchise, uh, if not at the top. You know, my, one of my, my dream is to actually own a team, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, you know, I, I don't need to have fully hands-on. I, I, you know, if I'm, if, I have, if I'm fortunate enough to own a team, then I'm going to hire the best GM and president that I can. Right. Uh, but I have uh, I feel like I got a, a good eye for... Uh, not only talent, because we we all see a lot of talent, but mm -hmm. the things that make the talent, the the chemistry, yeah, the chemistry, what type of guy he is, his work ethic, his yeah. his passion, his uh, his you know the basketball IQ side of things, because right. you know talent only goes so far. LeBron with his sights set on ownership. I like his ambition, but Stephen A. Should he be talking about ownership right now? Yes, he should. Absolutely, it's the best time. And I'm going to say something on that. I might, I might feel his comments about Michael Jordan as sacrilegious and blasphemous. But that's really about all you can say about LeBron James. I think I'm going to say something that I don't think has ever been said. I think when it comes to the National Basketball Association and all of professional sports, I genuinely believe in my heart two people were owed or are owed ownership of a franchise. One was Michael Jordan. The other is LeBron James. Um, you could throw Magic in there if you want to. That's fine. Uh, but Magic and Bird, the combination of the two, elevating the popularity of the sport, bringing the NBA into mainstream, that's entirely different than the global stratosphere. Michael Jordan transcended the sport too, and then LeBron James taking it to another level the way he has from a business perspective. When LeBron James, when you look at him, the pressure that was put on him, the way he's been in the public eye since he was 17 years of age on the cover of Sports Illustrated, the expectations that were placed on his shoulders, how from his very first game going up against the Sacramento Kings when he dropped 25 straight out of high school to what he has evolved into, it's not just about the three championships or anything like that. It is the fact that for 13 years, Pretty much LeBron James, with the exception of the Kobe years, LeBron James was the story in the NBA, at the very least for the last seven. And he has carried that baton in exemplary fashion. You can never question his effort. You can never question his commitment to excellence. You can question his accomplishments, but you can't question how badly he wanted it. You can question a lot of different things. And then to step off the court and to carry the brand of the NBA on his shoulders the way that he has. If anybody in the modern day era deserves an opportunity to own an NBA franchise, it is LeBron James. These owners, Michael Jordan is the only black individual in the room in terms of the owners in the league's board of governors. He's the only guy. LeBron James needs to be that guy. LeBron James was the guy that first spoke out about how Donald Sterling needed to go. LeBron James is the one that went about the business of globalizing his brand as exceptionally well as he has. He is the guy that constantly preaches about business. He conducts himself in exemplary fashion. He never gets into any trouble or anything like this. There is no reason on God's green earth for the NBA fraternity to keep LeBron James out of ownership. I believe that one of the reasons that LeBron James is back is because one day he will own the Cavs, either as part owner or as full owner when Dan Gilbert decides to take his ownership talents to Detroit because that's where he's from and that's what he really cares about, okay? But LeBron James is on course to be an owner in the NBA. He deserves it. And not only should we speak out in support of it, we should damn near insist 
that any time that an ownership position opens up, the moment LeBron James retires, if he wants an ownership stake, he should be allowed to have it because that is how much he has meant to the NBA, and he deserves to be in that room with those owners. He's, first of all, about LeBron James, the person. He's one in seven billion as a player. Seven billion people on earth. He's the best at what he does, and basically every tall person in the world, practically I can say that and not be hyperbolic, is trying to play in the NBA. It's super competitive, and he's number one out of seven billion people on earth. But so often with athletes, we also want them to be one out of a million people. You know, not only be this extraordinary athlete and beat all those odds, but also be a better person than most of us are capable of being. In LeBron's case, he seems to have done it. He's a one in seven billion athlete, he and is. he's a one in a million person. He really it seems. is. He took his day so, ones with him too. He with really boys is. And no question. You got if you if you have a problem with LeBron James, the man, unless it's something I, I can't. I mean, I, I think it. I, I can't imagine what it could be. Um, he has a chance to be a better owner than Michael Jordan. I mean, Michael Jordan hasn't set the bar very high there. And LeBron James, when you look at his personality from the time he was in high school. He's used his talents to elevate those around him. Michael Jordan, his talent, he always used to smash those around him. Even his Hall of Fame speech, he's taking shots at everyone, his kids, his former teammates, coaches, they're all there to honor him. And he's, he's so competitive, it's like toxically competitive, which is why he's the greatest player ever. And he's using it as a cudgel, you know, to smash everybody. Whereas LeBron has always, and Kobe Bryant was the same way as, as, as Michael Jordan. LeBron's used his gifts to always elevate everybody around him. I think that bodes well for him as an owner. But you mentioned there's only, at the, at the moment, one African-American owner in the NBA. LeBron would be the second. There is something that doesn't sit well with me that both of them happen to be the greatest players of their era. Like, maybe the best and second best player ever. Are, so, so the only, in, in, a, in a league that is, that is a majority African-American, there are only two African-American owners, and in order to get there, each had to be the greatest player anyone's ha anyone has ever seen. There's something well, that's not, I it's like the saying. only path to ownership wait, wait minute, is you wait. better be amazing let, with a basketball. Let, let, let me say this. Let's be fair to the NBA. First on two points. First things first, Bob Johnson was the first. Yep. Larry Bird and his group was Bob Johnson's competition. Larry Bird walked in there with 13 other people, sat up there talking about, all right, this is what we're trying to do. We're going to get this money together. They were a little short, but they had the money. They were going to get the money, and they were going to get their, with their group, and they were going to give it to the NBA so they could hit the Charlotte franchise. Bob Johnson walked in a little while later. This is according to my sources. They gave me some insight on this. Bob Johnson walked in there. Jerry Colangelo, the great Jerry Colangelo, got him in the room. You know, they both got Illinois roots. And Jerry Colangelo got him in the room, and Bob Johnson walked in there and said, I appreciate everything about Larry Bird. Very special man. Great player. We love him. But last time I checked, this was a financial issue here. And here is my financial portfolio. And it was worth in excess of $1.7 billion because of his days owning BET. Who do I cut the $300 million check to? That's how it goes. The NBA did not sit up there and say, hold on. NBA did not sit up there and say, we don't want this black person up in there. They said, huh, $300 million? Come on in. Come okay. on in, green so, so, person. So, 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 let's, so let's be clear. <laughs> yeah. Let's be clear. Not only did the NBA do that, they're the only ones who did do it. I'm not I suggesting I, I know you're not, that I know it's you're not, David Stern I, no, no, or Adam no, no, Silver. I, I know you're not suggesting anything like that. I'm just saying that it's important to point out that the NBA is the one sport who has done it. Major League Baseball hasn't done it. National Hockey League hasn't done it. National Football League hasn't done it. Where's the black ownership with those leagues? So if we're going to talk about them, let's get a Richard Lapchick on here to talk about fairness. Let's get a Richard Lapchick here, you know, with his Sports Institute. You know, let's get him on here to talk about the paucity of owners, the paucity of executives, et cetera. It's not to say that the NBA can't do better, but David Stern and now Adam Silver and the NBA have done Done an exemplary job in comparison. Could they do better? You're damn right. They all could do better. But in comparison to the other leagues, there's nothing what to discuss. Yeah, what doesn't, there's nothing I, to discuss. I'm glad you made that point. What doesn't sit right with it, 
uh, for me is not a reflection of the NBA. It's the reverberations of systemic inequality, where per capita there's less wealth among black people, et cetera. Sure. In other words, we are making progress, but right. we're not there yet, right. because even as a percentage of the population, you're going to find fewer African-American billionaires, right. for example. So, so what doesn't, what I don't, what doesn't sit right with it about me, it's, it's that the path, it's not the path specifically to NBA ownership, right. but let's just call it um, ownership of, an Amer of a major American sports franchise seems to be you have to be a player and you have to be the greatest ever, yes. and then you had to front the group, and but, that's how you get kissed but in. in. But in fairness to the leagues, let's also, as a black community, look at ourselves. Karen Hunter, a dear friend of mine, hosts her own radio show on Sirius XM, Urban View Channel 126, every weekday. Every week, she's screaming at the black community. She is a black woman, a Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist and a black woman. Every day, she's screaming at the black community how our spending power as a community exceeds $1.3 trillion. So we're spending, but what are we spending it on? How are we pooling our resources? How are we positioning ourselves as a community to position ourselves to get into a place where we could ultimately own a team. So we can't look at white America because of how we handle our business and blame them for keeping us out. Now, if you have the money and you're standing at the front door, which has been the case with some of us, and we are not allowed in, that is an entirely different argument than if we don't have the financial portfolio because we haven't accumulated our resources in appropriate fashion to gather ownership. We have to hold some level of culpability ourselves instead of always looking at somebody else to blame. But I think we all agree LeBron would be a fantastic owner and has the potential Without to question. be phenomenal. And we're, we're all on board and with he that. he deserves it. No question. He deserves it. When we come back, we're going to switch gears on a very serious note. Two swimmers that were with Ryan Lochte during the alleged robbery in Rio are being detained in Brazil. We will react to that situation when first take returns.